I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you to the City of Miami Beach for sponsoring these art talks. Thank you for Ivan for joining us on this little pop-up art talk that we, he agreed to do for us. And he's going to share more about his practice and about his background in Miami. Thank you. How's it going, guys? So, my name is Ivan Roque, and I'm a Cuban-American artist, uh, born and raised here in Miami. Um, you know, I was some from, from the Miami Gardens area to those who are from here, I'm from the Carroll City area. So, you know, uh, growing up, I grew up to uh, to working class uh, Cuban family, you get me? So, I wasn't really too exposed to the arts, you know, as far as the most, the most exposed to the arts I probably had was maybe like, you know, Guy Harvey and very commercial type art, you get me? And I, I didn't even think that art could be a possibility or career, but I was always drawing since I was a kid, so. You know, I was able. To, I went to uh, I went to a magnet school for elementary. You know, for art, I did that for two years, and then um, ultimately I didn't keep on the road that would have led me ultimately to New World. You know, I basically I basically went to like a regular middle school and high school, and then it wasn't until 18 that basically I was like, oh, what am I gonna do with my life? You know, honestly, I thought I was gonna become like a mechanic or or something in the AC, since my dad's an AC AC technician. So I was like, you know what? Uh, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. And then somebody was like, oh, why don't you become an artist? I'm like, oh, okay, that's, 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 not, that's not a bad idea. So, you know, at first I thought of graphic design, and then I thought of uh, tattooing, you know. Um, ultimately, I didn't know that murals would be, the, would be the, the calling, you get me? And then I'll never forget my first day that I, I ever hit a wall. You know, I was probably in high school. I was like, I was like 17 or something, and me and my friend, uh, my friend Jonathan, like oh let's go do graffiti we went to home depot and we bought no it wasn't even home depot we went to walmart and mm -hmm. we bought like, these one dollar cans of spray paint which is just horrible and like you know the amount of, the, the amount of pain that, that, that's on your fingers is, is, is terrible it's like, it's like a big pin just like pressing down your finger you know, it's horrible so you know what happens is you know we go we, we go paint on the side of the on the side of a railway you know um where they're painting and then a cop passes by and they light us up and then we immediately run you know, you know, my friend, uh, my friend, he never picked up a can ever since, ever since that day. I, I, on the other hand, you know, I kept on doing things and you know, we go to the next, to the next uh, pieces. So this is the beginning of basically my graffiti career, you know, so I would go to abandoned places and I'd paint and I'd go inside on the sides of roads. I wasn't as prolific as much of the, of the other uh, graffiti artists and the street artists, you know. I would very be, I would be very selective and try to hit profile, high profile places, anybody to kind of get uh, my branding, which was this, uh, which, which was this virus face. Because I wasn't good at letters, I wasn't good at the letters and all that. I kind of started with these like uh, little jack o' lantern faces, and I kind of gave a concept, concept to it, which is basically, you know, having kind of like a mischief, mischief and like childhood and all these things. And I always wanted, I had this, uh, this, this drawn to painting dark, you know, painting a very, very dark subject matter. I mean, and so you know, I'll go there and like at the beginning, I would now I would always like paint in the sense of like I'd go up to the wall, I'd paint, I'd stand back to make sure the proportions are right. You know, but as a as a street artist, a graffiti artist, you know, whenever you did the high profile places, you'd have to basically go very quickly. And, you know, whatever whatever can came out came out. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I go a lot and I practice in abandoned buildings. I go inside of abandoned buildings and then all these places, and they were great times. You know, especially. Like right here, this was this was here in the Marine Stadium there that now you can't even think of going inside. They, they locked it down completely. But this was a very a, a, a safe haven almost for a lot of a lot of urban artists and a lot of photographers and models and the skateboarders. I mean, it was just it was just a culture. It was like almost thriving in there. You know, and then it got locked down. Unfortunately, you know, the, the, they tried to they've been trying to reclaim it, but it hasn't hasn't happened since. You know, and then it develops. This right here was done in Key West. It was like done illegally as well. We just started painting the mural, you know, and um, and um, and basically, yeah, it didn't, it didn't it didn't really nobody nobody messed with us. You get me? Like it was just so in the broad daylight that nobody would ever think like, oh, this guy's doing it illegally. You get me? Mm -hmm. So we go, and then over there, that was me painting in, a, in, a, in an abandoned daycare in Liberty City. You know, again, very relaxing. You know, I get to practice and all that. This was done in New York. Very. Very scary because New York uh, graffiti is a felony. There you get caught, you're, you're going to jail. Like, you know, there's no, there's no slap on the wrist or anything there. You know. Then this right here, just more practicing. Towards this area, I've, I've already developed much more my can control. You know, my my lines. You get me. Like I've twisted the face. I give it a little bit more volume. But none of this was working. You get me. And like although this, although I was trying to brand myself, 
Like, um, if you guys have seen a, a very well-known orange that lingers around all the corners of Miami, you know, like Atomic, you know, he's a friend of mine. And so, you know, it's, that's what kind of graffiti and street art were really about. It was about this branding, right? Because at the end of the day, you kind of want to become Coca-Cola. Yeah. And there's a reason why people drink Coca-Cola or they're drinking Czech or something that they don't know. Because, you know, the more you see it, the more you're curious about it, the more you're going to want to try it, right? So... And, I'll, and you'll see why why I say how, how important branding is to this and how the graffiti mentality and the street art mentality plays such a big part into my current works nowadays. You get me? So, you know, we're doing, so I'm doing this and basically I started, I, around 2011, I did my first ever mural, which by the way, so a quick background on, on my education background. I am a Panther, I did graduate a Panther. But what happened was before that, you know, I graduated high school, you know, not knowing too much, you know, I was the first to go to college in my family. I went to AI because of how alluring and how much they promise you and this and that, which there's a lot of things that they don't know, but that's a whole other conversation. So ultimately I dropped out of AI because I kept on, I wanted to pursue the, the art career full, full time. You know, I wanted to really put my efforts towards that. So I leave for a bit, you know, I have a, I have a massive issues at home and whatnot, and I basically, I, I, Go, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go back to school because I already have so much debt that I incurred from my like, yeah, You know what, I want to go back to school and finish it. You get me? So I go and I do the route that I should have probably done since the beginning. I go to MDC, I get my associates, and then I go to FIU. And I was like, wow, this is an amazing experience. You know, this, this is like a real university, a real university feel. You get me? I really felt at home here. And the artists as well, and the teachers. It felt, it, it felt a very much true community. You get me? So, but mind you, my art career is already like you know, that's just a quick overview of my of my education career. You know, like time has passed, but we're gonna just stick to the to the murals and whatnot. So again, this is me going into into abandoned places. Like I said, I would go up to places and you know we would find sometimes these ladders, you know, that would just be there, and we use that and we scale up and we go up to the wall. You know, we draw it there, we stand back, see if proportions are right. Oh no, it's wrong. We go up again, and it was a lot of wasting time. Mm -hmm. The thing with murals is you don't want to waste time. With murals, you kind of want to go in, come out. I mean, it's all, it's all about speed, in a way, you know? And that's the reason why I like spray painting as well, because spray paint is a lot about speed. I mean, you can do a lot of, you can cover a lot of area, you can do a lot of textures, you can do a lot of, uh, anything you want, you get me, without, without having to like go in there with a brush, you know? Which I'm not knocking brush arts, I'm just saying, from my personal taste, I prefer spray cans, you know? So, this is we now fast forward to 2013, and after all these years and all and all that, you know, doing um, you know, doing graffiti and all, and inside of buildings, this is my first actual uh, mural that I went and did a wall myself. You get me? Because in 2011, I did a mural. I I was an artist assistant for a gentleman named Gabriel Jimenez, aka Gigi, and I did a mural with him. And you know what? I was the first taste of doing murals and actual commissioned work and all. I'm like, well, okay, you know, again, still didn't think. That'd be, a, that'd be a muralist, you know, just doing it. And I was around Wynwood as well, which kind of inspired me as well. I was seeing all these artists doing these large and like murals, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing, you know, like, like how do they do it? And, you know, you're just, you're just left in awe, you know, and, like the culture behind it, you get me, like, and then, like, it's, it was just a beautiful time. And so, right here, this played a lot of homage to Banksy. This was 2013, you know, fortunately, I was able to do it in front of Winter and Seven Gallery, you know, it was my first ever, it was my first ever mural which was, um, which was, it was a great, it was, it was a great opportunity, you get me? And so, you know, I do this, and then we move, now we start developing the style, because, you know, I'm like, I gotta get away from all this black. I only do black, black backgrounds, you know, because a lot of my work was inspired by Caravaggio. I, Caravaggio has been a massive influence in my work since, since, uh, since the, the early days, you get me? And I want to, the chiaroscuro and the tenebrism, you know, which plays a huge emphasis on, on lights and shadows, you know, as a way of shading and a way of uh, working the piece. So I wanted to do these colorful backgrounds to really make it stand out, because I wanted to do something, I wanted to simplify it a little bit, make it tasteful, you know? And something that my friends, uh, something that a good friend of mine, Ruben Uliera, once told me, is you have to look at your work item, you know, and you have to ask yourself, can you live with it? You might love it, people might love it, but you have to ask yourself, can you live with it? I'm like, huh, okay. I didn't really think about it much, you get me? So. Time passes by. This was 2016, I believe. You know, I'm already at this point. I'm already towards the end of graduating FIU, and um, you know, I go to New York and I, during this, I, you know, I'm doing something for Samsung and I have met other artists. 
you know, other networks as well. You know, that's a beautiful thing in the mural space. You know, I mean, it's, it's like any space. It's like any any type of field of work. You know, you meet peers and, and people from all over the world, and you just start expanding your horizons. So, you know, like because of this, I went over there and I, and I did this great piece. And it lasted a while, but like all murals, murals, you know, they're ephemeral in nature. They're like humans, right? You know, like just as fast as we're born into this world, we can be taken out. Same goes with murals. Like, I mean, there's no, there's a, there's this part there where you have to lose connection from a mural. So for me, if, a mural, if my mural gets destroyed, yeah, it hurts. But I have to move on from it because that's just what it is. You get me? It's meant to be for the moment. You, know, you have to live for the moment. That's what murals, the power that murals have. You know? And so we now evolve in the way of sketching. You get me? This was painted during a huge mural in Wynwood. You know? And um, I had already, like, you know, kind of learning from looking at other murals in Wynwood during Art Bob. So I would notice a lot of these Argentinians, like, such as Jazz. He'd be painting, and he'd be using this, I call it the Matisse method, where you basically get a long paint stick, you know, and you use from far away, you get to draw, exactly. You get to draw, you get to scale it up, you know, versus standing from back, from back here, and like, you know, drawing and going back. I mean, now, from here, you kind of like visualize, you know, because we're all artists here, we visualize what we can see, and we're like, okay, we're gonna do this here, we can do massive long, long strokes with the brush, and this and that, and make beautiful lines, you know, and then we finally create a structure. You know, but this was being, and so we're developing now. You know, the styles, the style's still developing. I'm still painting very dark. You know, my style takes a massive evolution in about two oh, years or a year. That. So here, during this era, you know, like I, I got inspired by, I got inspired by, by the assassination of Gianni Versace, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm talking about the show actually. You know, so I was looking at it because I, you know, I always try to find a way how to represent Miami, how to represent us. Whenever I travel, wherever I go, this was painted in New Orleans, you know. And I want you to remember this mural, you know. I want you to remember this mural and this wall, right? And I was practicing a lot of elements of, you know, predator and prey, and the balance of nature and life and death. You get me? And how and how these things really, um, really come together. You get me? How this needs to escape this to survive, but this needs to eat this to survive. So it's like almost like this demand where it just needs to happen. And I was playing with like with like the backgrounds there, adding shapes and all that, but it just wasn't enough. It wasn't visually too appealing. You know what I mean? I'd always be like, ah, you know, like, like why, aren't I getting, why aren't I getting invited to other things and other projects and this and that? But it's because, and I remember a friend of mine told me, he's like, I mean, you have no style. You're good, but you have no style. I'm like, well, I don't know what that means. He's like, you don't have something that says you. You know, what is it that if you go somewhere in the, in the world, it's gonna be you? And that sunk with me, I just didn't get what that meant. I didn't know exactly what that meant, right? And I remember one time we were all painting at this uh, this paint jam, right? And this graffiti artist really tried me. You know, he basically was like, oh, like, you know, it's just a fish. It's a good fish, but the fish looks dead. There's nothing there making it alive. Like, what's you? You know, what's he, he, he questioned me. I remember I was so upset. I was so, <laughs> like, I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, man, like, you know, like, like what do you mean? You get me? And in a way, I kind of, like, I, you know, in retrospect, you thank the people that were hard on you, and you thank the people that, as an artist, pushed you and they tried you, because that's what that's what helps us grow. You know, through the discomfort is how we, we have growth. So we move from here, right? And this, mind you, when I did this mural, I got in my car. I I basically just was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do this mural tour around the southern United States. I got in my car, I packed everything there. I didn't have any money. You know, we're talking about I loaded up for for food. I loaded. I went to the market and I and I got I got a uh, salchicha, like a little Vienna sausage, some crackers, a peanut butter and jelly, and bread. You know, and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a thing full of water. And I remember like I was traveling there. And thankfully, like in all the cities I went to, I had friends there, you know, that were staying there, so I would stay with them for a few days and let me hang out. But and all these murals that I was doing was for free. You know, I was I was just doing this because I just wanted to be out there. I want I want to fill this greater purpose. You know, so we move now, right, into what becomes a very more, a much more important piece in my life. You know, here, you know, things are getting better. You know, the the co the colorful aesthetic is working. That Miami aesthetic is working. But it's not working enough. You get me? Like, I still don't have a, I still don't have a full grasp of what it means to be able to charge for for art very well and all that. And I'm doing so. I'm doing this piece. Uh, you know, get hit up by Live Nation and, and do this mural for Corona. I mean, in the back and then in the front, I do this blue background. This was a live painting, you know? And I do the live painting, and I do like this fish with vines and all that. I'm not really thinking much of it. I'm not thinking much of the vines, you know? So I do it, okay, you know, whatever. 
All right, and then I have a mural project, a mural festival that I have to get to in Tennessee. This is in Fort Lauderdale. I have to drive to Tennessee and get there by, by the next day for the mural festival that already started that same day. Thankfully, it rained in Tennessee, so the project got delayed a day. You know, so I remember me, me and my fiance, we basically drove in the, we got in the car, you know, and we drove all the way to, we drove all the way to, to, uh, to Tennessee, you know, and we got there, we left here at 4 p.m. and we got there like at 5, 6 in the morning. I was dead tired, and I had a massive crack in my windshield. You know, but I was driving, man. I'm telling you, I was driving, I was driving a little MX-5 hatchback <laughs> protege. That should have not been doing these type of tricks, you know. And at five in the morning, with with practically hail hitting the car, with downpouring, cracked windshield, like man, I was I was I was even drinking hot sauce to stay awake. That's how bad it was, you know. And the rain really started getting bad in Atlanta. And when we get to Atlanta, that's where I'm like, you know, I had two hours left to get to Chattanooga. And God, that was so bad. You know, I don't recommend ever doing that. But we did. But again, so I get I get to Tennessee, wake up the next morning, and I and I draw this, right. And what happens is now we see a true continuity of, of the work. We're like, okay, you know, I really like that vine thing. Why don't I just do the vine again? You know, and I'm doing the vine. I'm looking at the snake, and I'm like, huh. And then it, it dawned on me: what if I were to wrap everything in vines? And I put flowers, and I use that as a part of the concept and the association behind the works. And I just develop that. You get me? And now I have something that people would recognize me. You get me? So I'm using that graffiti mentality and that street art mentality of branding, you get me? That I've always known, and now, I'm, now I've found something that I can actually play around with and be happy with because now I can evolve with it. So, you know, what happened, what happened was I created this kind of this box, which was just your style, and you basically were able to evolve within it. You get me? Because you want a continuity of your work and, and you're able to evolve. You can do so many things, and there's so many ideas that you can evolve upon. So, the vines became a thing, the flowers became a thing, and then I started I started elevating the work. You know, we, we now go a year later, this right here is probably one of the most pivotal pieces of my work. It's, been, it's in New Orleans as well. It's been featured on Parade Magazine. It's been representing as the mural for New Orleans. It was a mural for every, all the 50 states. You know, it became, it became an icon for the neighborhood because this was painted in the Ninth Ward. That's the beautiful thing about murals. When you're painting murals, you'll have people that come up to you People that that that, um, that love what you're doing, they want to know the message, and the message behind those was always a better day. You know what I mean, and the thing is, this was post Katrina, so you know, like I remember this gentleman comes up on his bicycle and they look at the mural, and he starts crying, and he starts telling me his story, and he starts telling me how how you know this is a great uplifting message because when he was when Katrina hit, he was out in Houston or so he was somewhere like out out of state, and he had to come home because he couldn't get a hold of his family. And he was pulling bodies out of the water. Thankfully, he found his family, but 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 they had to basically they lost everything. They had to recover and they had to start from scratch. You get me? And this is a reminder that no matter what happens, you know, there's always going to be a better day ahead of you. So that's the thing. When you do public art murals, you always have to consider the environment where it goes. You get me? Because at the end of the day, sure, I'm the one that creates it, but I have to consider the people that live there. I have to represent them. You know, I represent Miami because I bring the color scheme and I bring certain influences and the style. You know, like my work is heavily inspired by Gianni Versace, right? And like this Miami aesthetic, it's very flashy pops. But I gotta make sure wherever I go, I bring that element to it. And you'll see why that's important, because you know, every community is different. And I'll explain to you, as we go further along, a massive part of where, like that plays along the idea of the community and involvement as well, you know? And unfortunately this mural is half gone. You know, there's, it's been graffiti from the bottom down, you know? But, and people always, there's someone go to New York, like, oh, you're gonna fix it, you're gonna fix it, you're gonna fix it. I'm like, no, 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 you know, like, I mean, I just don't have time, you know, we gotta go for another job and like, you know, like resources and all that, you know, you gotta sometimes bring it from other states, it's crazy, you know? And also, finally, a graffiti artist by, by, by the artist, by the name of uh, Utter, you know, he's very, he's very well known in New Orleans and, you know, he did a, a catfish piece under it as well. It kind of made this like, almost like a collaboration look to it. And I even wrote to him like, hey man, this looks amazing. I was like, yeah, you know, this is great. You know, maybe we'll work on it together when I come back there. All right, cool. You know, so again, the style has been established. We now know that we like vines. We now know that we like the animals and I can do whatever I want. It doesn't matter, I can do whatever I want, you know? So this right here was probably, um, I would say my second international mural because my first one, we went, to, we went to Korea and that was a, 
and experience in itself. That's, that's a beautiful thing about murals, you know, and art in general. I mean, art will take you to the world, but murals, you get to go and experience the people and experience the reaction and see, you know, and the, and the funny thing is people will protect these murals and people will, will, will welcome them with open arms because they become landmarks. You know, at the end of the day, that's what a mural is. A mural is a landmark. There's only one in the world and it exists within that community. So if people want to see it, you have to take a photograph of that or you have to travel it, you know? So here we did. So here I did a mural in uh, in Acumal. This was a little pueblito, you know. And this was such a great experience because you know, like a first time painting in Mexico, you know. So it's a great experience. Lots of artists around, you know. An amazing experience. And the people, you see the townspeople coming on by. They are playing, and they they would come and they bring you food and all that. And you know, it's just one a great time. It's an amazing experience. A great time, you know. And again, associate to the to the neighborhood. I mean, like they have a lot of needlefish in the area. So I wanted to paint needlefish and all that, and they all have deep meanings while I'm painting. I mean, at the moment, I, I, I'm not, I, I can't remember exactly what was the meaning behind the, the needlefish. You know, it's been many years and lots of spray paint fumes, so, you know, memory goes, memory gets a little shot after a while, you know. But this one right here, so this was done in Manchester, Tennessee. This was my first experience that I ever painted in like a small town. We're talking about, this is a small town. This is a place that the only thing it's known for is Bonnaroo, and outside of that, there is nothing to do. Literally get there, and you are gonna you're gonna put gas, and you're gonna keep on going. You know, it's one of those little towns. So I got I, you know, during this time, you know, I would do a lot of scouring the internet. You know, because I would always try to find opportunity because I'm like I need to find opportunity. I told myself I cannot go I can't go back to working a regular job. I can't do it. I don't care how little it pays. I just need to get by. It doesn't matter what doesn't matter what I do. You know, I just need to find figure out a way. So I would write to organizations, anything. I put. I stay up till three in the morning sometimes, just there hours on end, just looking for opportunity, writing to people, because when opportunity doesn't present itself, you have to go knocking for it. Always remember that you have to look for the opportunity if the opportunity doesn't come for you. You know, never let your ego get in the way and never think that you are entitled to any type of opportunity because you're not. You need, you need to make it happen. You need to put that energy out into the universe and always keep pushing forward, you know? And another, and on another note, you know, Whenever, you, whenever you're gonna quit, always keep pushing, because at that moment, you're, when you're saying you're gonna quit, you're about to hit a landmark. Mm -hmm. You know what it is, something's gonna happen that when you say, I'm not quitting today, it's gonna elevate you to the next level, or it's gonna keep sustaining you, to be able to keep on pursuing what you do. Because like that, that, that message of whatever energy you, you put into the universe you get is very true, I believe. And everybody believes their own thing, but I truly believe that, because I have firsthand experience the amount of work <laughs> amount of uh, things that I've been able to do. But well, so this is Manchester, Tennessee. I'm sorry, I went to like a little, little tangent on that one, but so this is Manchester, Tennessee, again, you know, I was only offered to do one wall. You know, they're gonna be, oh yeah, we can, you know, we can pay you $1,500, you know, and it's this wall right here, this first one. But then I see this and I'm like, this looks like a great opportunity. I wanna elevate my work, you get me? I wanna, I wanna come in there like a conceptual artist and think more, you know, and think about the space. So I'm like, what if, can I, what about the other two walls? Can I do the other two walls as well? They're like, yeah, but we can only pay you for one though. I don't care, I want the wall, I want the three walls. So, this, so you know, being in Tennessee, this was in the fall, and a Miamian and very, you know, river water does not do well. You know, I'm talking, I was freezing. I was, this, that water was 40 something degrees. You know, the coldest I had experienced by then was here in the Florida Springs, which was 72. I remember walking into that water every single day and my feet would ultimately get numb. It was so painful, you know? And it was probably like this much of high water and then well, we'd have to work on a scaffolding. So they were able to put scaffolding in the river and just made it work, but it was so serene. I remember, I wish I had the picture. You know, I remember I was there, like I'm there sitting on the scaffold there and I'm working it and this and that. And I look around me and I'm like, how beautiful this is. I mean, like all the, the crickets there and it's, it's next to a playground. You see the, all the kids playing and people there flying kites, people relaxing in the park. You know, people walking by, people admiring your work. And this is the first time small. I got I got a feel for small town uh, America. You know, you know, being from a big city. I remember somebody came up to me and they, they brought me a sandwich. Like, oh, you go, sir, you a sandwich. And, you know, being even from being a big city, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what the sandwich here. You know, I'll take it to be nice. And I looked at the sandwich for a while. I'm like, ah, man, you see, you're so hungry. You know, ultimately I eat the sandwich. But and then you know later on people are like, oh, you know, can I can I can I get you a supper and this and that. You go into these places, and it's not like in a big city where you do a mural, and you know only a handful of people appreciate it. No, everybody appreciates it because it 
because it's such a landmark to them, because it's something so big and powerful, something they had never done before. In the town, there was only one other mural that was painted by this artist there, and it was a magnolia and an American flag. And let's put it this way, it was a rather safe mural, you would think. And then when she, when she, when she was doing it, the cops were called and all types of things, and it was horrible. And thankfully, the mural stayed up, you know, but the story reached, uh, reached you know, national news, and that's where I kind of learned about, the, about these, uh, uh, these folk. It's Kristen and Scott, you know, and you know, I talked to them, and I went out there, you know, I stayed with, with them, and I got this painted. And another thing why I say it's very important to research where you're painting is you can't paint whatever you want wherever you go. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I remember I was painting first the, the, the head, and this gentleman comes up to me. Mind you, this is the Bible Cup. You know, like, you're very religious here. This gentleman comes up to me, he's like, excuse me, sir. Is that a serpent painting? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm like, no, sir, no, no, it's an American eel. It's actually native to your waters, you know. And uh, you gotta be like, you guys have them around here, you know. It's just like kind of raising awareness and all that about it. I said, oh, okay, okay, no, that's not. I thought you were painting a, a serpent for a second, you know. So if it had it been a snake, I can guarantee you that would have been a massive issue. You know, and, and God knows the whole town would have probably rallied against me. <laughs> but thankfully we didn't go there. But you know, but as you see, the, the the eel starts here, it goes in there, and then it pops out. It looks like it's just going throughout the whole piece, throughout the river, you know? So we move on. And then so this is my first piece in Europe, you know, and I just have the book. I don't have the book on me, I kind of wish I brought it now, but so I, I basically did Art Infect 4. This was pre-pandemic, you know. I went over to, to Germany and I painted inside. The, the whole project was kind of this um, massive abandoned uh, complex and they do pieces inside of there and then you take tours and educate people on murals, public art, street art, and graffiti. And so I, luckily I was fortunate enough to represent America when I went over there and you know, I painted and, I, and again, uh, the beauty of being able to do this is that you get to go meet people from all across the world. I had never met this gentleman before and I was staying and I, and I was staying in his studio. You know, this guy, this guy could have easily killed me if he wanted to, but <laughs> You know, you have that trust because of the art. The art is what connects us. The art is more important than our fears. We have to get past our fears again to grow. You know, I think that's the most most beautiful thing about it. So I go and I paint this painting and like, you know, there was this gentleman that was living inside of the complex. He was a homeless guy. You know, and I remember he came, he comes up to me, you know, and like, you know, I'm very, like I'm very cautious when I'm painting in abandoned places. So, you know, me, I see, I kind of see him coming from, from far away and I kind of grab, a metal pole behind me, just you know, just in case you never know. You know right? <laughs> hey, this guy's thing. speaking German to me, and then my friend happens to come at the same time. Well, no, you know, I'm sorry, we're there. He's, he's there talking to me in German. I can't understand him. He speaks very, very little English. But he walks away. I'm like, okay, this guy's not a threat because he seemed like he liked the, the artwork. <laughs> and then my my friend that I was staying with, he comes by. You know, he's there. And then this gentleman comes back, and then he's there talking to him and all that. And he's like, oh yeah, he said that it reminds him of Colombo. I don't know. I didn't know what Colombo was. Apparently, it's like the show here in the States, you know, the detective show and all that. So he, they kept pointing to the dog saying, Colombo, Colombo, I'm like, you know what, we'll call the piece Colombo. So the piece is titled <laughs> Colombo in honor of this gentleman, you know, and uh, because it was his home. You know, I came and I, and I beautified his home a little bit. And he would, and he had a cat, and he came, showed his cat, you know, and it was a, it was a great magical experience. You know I mean, and it, mind you, this is the first time I've ever seen snow, you know? <laughs> I've seen, I've never seen snow in my life, and it was so beautiful. I went outside and, and I cried. Because of how gorgeous it was. You get me? And I was like, wow, how fortunate I am to be out here and painting and seeing this. You know? And then what happens is, you know, as, as I'm leaving back and going back to the house, you know, I'm definitely not prepared with the right shoes. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I hate the snow. It's so cold. <laughs> everything, everything is wet. Everything is wet. Everything is just like miserable. Like, not gonna wear the same wet painting shoes for like the next two days. You know? But, none, but nonetheless, it was still a great experience. It was beautiful. You get me? Like, the fact that, you know, I'm just out there and all that. And I was able to kind of experience, you know, aside because you know something that I do when I write travel, I try to see what type of landmarks, whatever famous things are around, you know. And over there, I, I, I went to Berlin, I went to Munich, to Frankfurt, went to Dresden, and I got to see the world. I got to see the world, and I think the tickets to Germany were like three hundred dollars, you know, like three hundred dollars. I mean, what more can you ask, you know? Of that so. So that was that. And this right here became a book. You know, they had just sent me the book. We had an exhibition in Switzerland about uh, two weeks. It's actually still open now, but the opening was about two weeks ago. It's up to the 30th, you know? And so, you guys remember the, the heron chasing the frog? Yeah. So, fast forward about three years, and that is what replaced it, you know? So, <clears throat> I went back and I did this mural 
from my love for New Orleans. I love New Orleans so much. You know, New Orleans has really taken me as the one, as one of their own as far as their their their, their mural and street art history. You know, so I create this piece as kind of like a like a love letter. It's basically called Cajun Vice, and you know, I want to create elements from Miami and elements from New Orleans and just tie them together and really create this beautiful montage. And this was actually probably the first time that I did the gradients because I'm like, you know what? I was getting bored of the solid colors. I'm like, I need more. I need to evolve more. Like, the solid colors is not doing it. I need to find what can we do next? What's the next thing? So, the gradients, slight little change, but it's evolution. You know, the pieces naturally, they start getting better. You, know, you can start seeing already, you know, like much more detail, taking very consideration of the light going in, you know, blues and all that. So, you know, the first time I do the gradients. And so, from that process that you guys saw of the big sticks, I now I now finally learned the doodle grid. You know, which the doodle grid has probably become the most powerful muralist tool, tool tool nowadays. You get me? This right here is just as almost it's almost just as good as projecting. It's just it's just as good as your traditional grid when allowed. You know, because then the way this works is so what I do is this right. I go and I start the mural off of a bunch of these doodles. You know, it's a great warm up also with the spray can and whatever. So I do all these doodles and all that, boom, 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 boom. And mind you, I, I like to mess with people because I'm like, oh yeah, it's done. When I'm done doing the doodles, I'm like, yeah, it's done, it's finished, what do you think? And they're like, oh, they start freaking out, they get scared. People, are, people even come to me and say, oh my God, what are you doing? You know, you're doing graffiti. And I'm like, yes, I am. I don't be calling them the police. It's like, no, then I, then I have to explain to them because the last thing we want is to get cops on us, right? Yeah. So, you know, I do, I do this and I do that. You know, so I do I do the do all the doodles and all that. And what I do is I take a photograph of the wall. You know what I'm saying I take a photograph of the wall and I basically superimpose my sketch onto the piece, onto the wall, on the photograph, and I start moving things around to where I want it placed to get the proportion. So now I know where the piece is going to go. And what I do, and what you do is, as you can see, you basically start kind of like drawing it out. You look at okay, this goes here, boom. This goes here, okay. It goes between. These two things, the eye are be, is between there. You get me? And then if you need to fix it, they have like it, little, little landmarks. Like little landmarks, exactly. That's what they that's what they serve as. So it creates a, a grid system, you know. And of course, the best system still is no matter what, you, it will never fail. Is the traditional grid, which is basically you know the twelve by twelve squares, boom, 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 boom. You know that will never fail. You know that right there, wherever you're at, no matter the scale, no matter that, you're never hindered. This right here, you're hindered by technology. And you're hindered by, by um, let's say if the if, if the wall is really big, and the space to be able to take a photograph is very small, you won't be able to get a full dynamic. Which I kind of had that issue, and in, in, um, now I went to New York and I painted there. But I'll I'll, I'll explain how you, you know. So you have to basically kind of go in pieces and boom, take pictures and then sketch it out. And sometimes you have to add things, and you know things never go as planned. That's a beautiful thing about murals, also. Things could never go as planned, and you have to kind of work around that because you. Are subject to the elements. You're subject to. Uh, you're subject to. Um, you know, space. the wall space. You know, to what resources you have. Because if you run out of spray paint in the middle of nowhere, you're either gonna have to drive hours to get it. You know, or you're gonna have to figure out. You have to get it very creative really quick. You know, and so what I'll do is so when I finish doing the, the gradient, all I have my sketch. I do the background. So I do the gradient. I use uh, one of these Wagner sprayers. You, know, you can use any spray gun that's really good. You know, this one right here is inexpensive, gets, gets it done. You know, we kind of do this nice gradient there, and it fills a lot of space, you know, especially for a crevice. Again, I like spray because you don't have to be digging it in there and all that. You know, you're just laying it on. And then, you know, I go and I start rendering my pieces and all that. This, these photographs were taken at the Blue Mural Festival in Amarillo, Texas. You know, and again, murals will take me places that I would never in my life think I'd be going, you know. And I went to Amarillo, and I'm like, this sounds familiar. Now I'm like, oh, this is where Cadillac Ranch is. So whoever, so whoever knows about our history, you know, Cadillac Ranch is basically the, all the Cadillacs lined up sticking in the ground. So I was able to see this amazing piece. You get me? It's kind of like these pilgrimages that you take. You know, I'll never forget when I went to when I, when I went into Ger when I went to Germany. I saw the Cleopatra bust. If you guys, if you guys done our history, you see the Cleopatra bust. Everybody who study art knows the Cleopatra bust. So I saw that, and seeing it in front of you is kind of like, you guys seen American Psycho with Christian Bale? Mm -hmm. You remember that part there was looking at the card and he's just like mesmerized? Yeah, that was me. I was like, oh my God, you know, there's a big glass so you can just smack your face around the middle. Of it. You know, can't even take a picture of it. You have to go into the, the other room from, from like 30 feet away. It's great. 
So then as we go, we keep on evolving. I'm like, man, I need more elements to my work. I need to just get more complex of it. You know, the singular figures are just not doing it so much. So, you know, I went to Flint, Michigan to do this. You know, never in my life would I think I'd be going to Flint, Michigan. Right? Um, you know, the Flint Public Art Project keeps out to me and says, we love your work. You know, let's make it happen. You know? So I go out there and I'm like, you know what? I want to create a tribute. Because I remember people, people when I went over there, like, when I was going over there from here, they'd be like, oh, be careful with the water. Oh, it's super dangerous and all that. And yes. A lot of places in Michigan, there are a lot of dangerous parts, but it opened up a light for me about Flint, Michigan. I'm like, wow, Flint, Michigan is a beautiful place, you know? And you can buy real estate for $5,000. I'm, I'm serious, you can buy a house for like ten, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000, you know? But um, that's, aside, that's aside from the point, it's the same real estate classes. You know, so I go over there and I wanted to create a story and I got inspired by it and I'm like, you know what, this is called Visions of the Promised Land. So I take elements that are that are native to the place. There's a lot of fireflies in the north, beautiful. You know, out, out here we have uh, the click beetles, which are the cuyos, you know, with the green with the green lights, you know. Over there they have like these actual fireflies that, that blink, you know, and it's beautiful. So I, I basically do the past of Flint and what Flint is kind of going through, right? Which basically creates these dark roses, these black roses in the dark, and then the firefly serves as hope. Serves as hope to the people. And then the bobcat is representative of basically visions and like, you know, like prophecies. So it's kind of like envisioning the future, what's to come, you know? And so we have the flowers and the butter, the flowers, they represent the struggle and the, and the ongoing efforts of, of the people that want to basically change Flint and to elevate it once again to where it once was because General Motors is where Flint started. You know, and another thing, going to these places, you learn about the history. So I said, I remember I was driving, we were driving me and my friend and I see all these weight, like these wastelands of just concrete, of con just concrete roads. And I'm like, what was this? He's like, these were the automotive industry. It all went down when everything shut down. They just started tearing things down to to be able to, you know, like like um, stop the homeless issues and all that, and like people getting robbed and all that. And you know, Flint has a very beautiful has a very beautiful uh, museum as well. You know, so I didn't, I would never think a world class museum. Honestly, it would, it would give a run for its money to any any major city if you were to go there. Beautiful. You know, with an amazing collection, but nobody ever talks about that. So the idea of public art is the Flint Public Art Project is that we're gonna make Flint the the, the city of murals. You know, we're gonna make it a place where people can come and you know drive art tourism and, and bring investors. You know, and so again, the butterflies represent the freedom that once will bring. You know, it will create financial freedom, bring jobs, and help have a positive change in the neighborhood. You know, and so this right, this mural right here is in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. South Pittsburgh, Tennessee is this very, very, very small town, similar to Manchester, um, Tennessee. And you know, like, so when I did this piece right here, this was the first town, this is a town of like, of like, you know, very, uh, very, very country folk, you know? You know, not, not, not too many people are, are, are educated on art or anything like that. So they asked me, it's like, I mean, you know, this is the first mural, can you do us a favor? I usually don't do this, you know, like, okay, can you do us two renditions? You know I mean? So I did one that's a little bit more challenging, a little bit much more uh, colorful and uh, conceptual wise. And I did one that kind of reflected the town. And we had a town hall meeting, so people can tell me about the town. So people from the, the, the town would come up to me and like they'd be like, like oh, so this is what I'm, this is like, you know, South Pittsburgh, it's our football, our local high school football team. It's a, uh, it's a uh, cast iron. And they give me a story, the Cornbread Festival. Very simple, very simple America. You know what I'm saying it's the country. So I'm like, all right, you know, I get all these things together, I create a very colorful piece, and I create this. You know, this one won by a 60% margin. You know, so this people wanted wanted this mural. You know, and it goes to show you, had I done the other mural without taking consideration the folk, you know, that this is a much more traditional piece versus the other one. You know, this would resonate with people. People have never seen art in their life. People have never left this town were coming up to me and saying how beautiful it was and how thankful they were for it. You know, and also the, the high school, the high school community they didn't have any type of art program you know so a lot of the kids the only art access they had were whenever they traveled and they had like a little art club in the town you know it was kind of organized by like the art leaders of the town you know and I remember I talked to this kid there and I told him listen like you know like this is a very viable way because murals is a very viable way of making a living as an artist you know and so that was a great time this mural was about 100 feet long by 25 feet high and it creates all the elements um, from the from the from South Pittsburgh. How long did it take you to do? All these murals usually take about a week. 
Yeah. Some heroes will take a little less, and like I usually take, I try, I try to like add a few days so I can go and travel around. Like during that trip, I went to Nashville and I went to go to the Jack Daniels Distillery. And say it was a great time. Recommend. And then, um, so Amarillo, this was the one I painted Amarillo, and again, I this animal has no connection to me whatsoever. You know, I had submitted a sketch for it. Originally, it was gonna be a badger and, uh, and a coyote. Because badger and coyotes have a very a very uh, friendly relationship in nature. They're actually friends in nature. They actually coexist and they hunt together. But so they tell me like, oh, I mean, you know, that doesn't really. They're not. Those animals aren't really here in our region of Texas. You know, so, um, he, here's a bunch of animals. So I start researching all that and I find this little guy. And it's and its name. It's a great horned lizard, or as locally known, it's a horny toad. And apparently, these things were very uh, were very uh, common back in the day. But because of agriculture and humans and all that, and you know pesticides they almost they're nearly endangered you know and so people while I'm painting it people come up to me and they're like oh my god I remember seeing those as a kid and they just great created this sense of nostalgia and the meaning behind the great horned lizard is that it's basically a symbol of, uh, of strength a symbol of community and unity and it creates hope as well and also also creates you get me um like a, a, a sense of a sense a, a sense of urgency to want to protect it as well so it's creating a Again. You enlighten somebody on the situation. You guys know what I'm saying. Awareness. Awareness, yes. Sorry. <laughs> One of those things there against pregnant humans. You know, so yeah, it creates a lot of awareness and all that about these creatures. And honestly, it was one of the favorites of the mural festival that year. People were like, oh my God. <coughs> Where was it? This was in, that was in Amarillo, Texas. And so this right here, this was done in a school in, in Janesville, Wisconsin. You know, uh, it was the second the second year doing the festival, so again, go to the mural next to the town, you know. And this was super hard. Like I did, I so I did kind of a grid system, but not really. I just went straight off the brick. What I did was I took the photo and I put my sketch on it because I wanted to preserve the brick, you know, because how beautiful it's beautiful, you know. Natural brick is nice. And I wanted to kind of like make this nice little patterns, but like man, drawing this was so hard because I was counting bricks the entire day. Like okay, this goes here, <laughs> boom. This goes there, boom, 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 boom. Never do that again. I'll, I'll, the next time, I'll, if I have to do something like that, I'll project it because that that was not fun, you know. And then, and so this right here was one of my latest murals I did. I did this one last year as well. This was basically in uh, the city of North Miami. You know, city of North Miami contacted me. He's like, I know, we love your work. You know, we're, uh, the government has given us lots of funding. You know, to do murals. You know, we're, we're doing three this round, and we want you to be part of it. I'm like, All right. So. The good thing is sometimes about murals is you know you have to go chase calls to artists, you have to do a, a bid for projects and all this and that. And I had submitted this mural actually it wasn't supposed to be for the city of North Miami. It was originally supposed to be for the airport, for the Miami International Airport. And I was amongst a great pool of artists, a huge jury, I did two concepts, and oh, ultimately I didn't get picked. You know, I was like, ah, no doubt about it. But I had the sketch; it was already ready, done. And so I remember like the city of North Miami calls me, you know, all that, and then I talk to the owners. We send. I always wanted to do a gator, you know, like I love gators, you know, so I wanted to really wanted to do a gator and I submitted a gator because it was like a security company and it was it was very aggressive. Again, people don't really like aggressive in the public realm. Not too much. Some people are able to get away with it. I know an artist here that he literally was able to paint a person suffocating with a bag over their head on the side of a building and somewhere in Europe. And I was like, I have no idea, but hey, that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? So you know, again, I want to play cliche. I want to go on the, on, the, on the very cliche subject matter of Miami and South Florida. So the whole idea was basically to 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 embrace Julia Tuttle and what she did for us and our history. I mean, so Julia Tuttle is basically represents with the orange, you know, because she sent the oranges to to Henry Flagler to bring the railroads down. You know, in exchange, she would give her X amount of land. And the cool thing about it is Miami's the I believe the first or only I think it's the first. Though, major city in America to to be founded by a woman, you know? So that's a beautiful thing about, uh, that goes to our history, you know? And so I wanted to create the, the flamingo as a symbol of kind of like, a symbol of like, you know, like the flashiness, the classiness, you get me? And how, and how it's kind of like, how kind of like Miami is its own breed, its own rarity to it. I mean, when you go outside of here, people have no idea. We talk very differently. We have a very different mannerism. We have a different way of being out here. It's a beautiful thing. We're like a melting pot. We're the capital of Latin America, you know. So that's a beautiful. I think that right there, you know, that all adds to it. You get me all this like beautiful melting pot and into your uniqueness, right? 
And again, all natives, and flamingo, yes, flamingos are native to Florida. I mean, they were hunted almost to extinction. And then they were once bred into captivity there in the Hialeah, but, the, but actually they found out, the researchers did, that there is a native flock that's been here forever in Central Florida and in the Everglades as well. So yes, flamingos are native to Florida. And then I had the dolphin because, you know, if you ever go down to the, go on a boat, you know, you see dolphins, they're very uh, welcoming and they come up to you and they play in the waves and all that. And I wanted that to be part of our nature as well, you know? And again, as you see the vines, the vines are in every piece. Vines are very important in every work I do. And well, sorry, I'm not sorry. So, um, so, you know, we have here, I did this in Hattiesburg, Tennessee. Their, their mission is, again, a lot of the, a lot of these small cities and towns, they take great pride in their murals, you know. I never in my life thought that I'd go to Hattiesburg, Mississippi to do a mural. But, you know, fortunately I went, I submitted to a call to artists, I didn't get picked. They reached out to me and they're like, Ivan, we want you to do, we love your work so much, and we want you to do a mural for us. So they commissioned me. What turned out to be a call to artists that I didn't get, turned out to be a commission. That goes to show you how much it's important to get your work out there, let people see it, because you never know when it's gonna come turn around. This ultimately came to turn around to be my biggest party to date. You know, and this project right here, hopefully, another one that's coming, up, possibly coming will be my biggest part today. But this right here was the first time ever that somebody's like, I have here's thirty thousand dollars. You know, saying let's make it happen. And I was like, Phew. you know, and of course you have to. That's not thirty. You're not getting thirty thousand dollars. You know, you have to basically pay taxes and you have to get workers. Everything has to come from that part. You know, but we made it happen and we turned a nice profit. We we're ten days. It was a three hundred. In total, it was about three hundred feet of wall. You know, I'd say, because the mural was about 100 feet, 100 something feet long. We had to do the outside, and this was 10 days of painting in like 30, 40 degree weather every day. Boom, boom, from 9 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night working hard. Boom, boom, boom. We were so dead tired out of this. But the people appreciated it. The mayor came out. People were coming to us, talking to us, you know? And like, and it was it was, it was, it was a great experience. It was, it, was, it was an amazing time. I was, I was even like, oh, you know, maybe I even might consider you know, getting property out in Hattiesburg. You learn about these little places, you're like, wow, you know, it's a, it's a college town. I believe the University of Mississippi is there, University of South Mississippi. One of those, I'm not, I'm not gonna be too sure. You know, that's another one of the more pieces of the wall. And that's us working in, you know, so every assistant had a sketch and I had to bring all this paint, I had to have so much paint, we took everything, we had to organize it. You know, I had to run a U-Haul, like, it, was, it was crazy. And so this right here is one of the newer murals. This mural right here, I painted it for for Jupiter Games. And it was a fun mural because in Broome County, sorry, it was for the for Broome County in New York. So I painted this one about, I wanna say about a month and a half ago. I painted it and you know, like it was a great time because I was able to kind of get rid of fan, uh, fantasy. So, you know, me and the, and the business owner, you know, they had told me the, the people from Broome County, listen, they don't tell you what you paint, you know, you just, you know, they, give, they, they, they talk to you and then, you know, if you want to like, you know, like incorporate something about them, you can. I'm like, you know what, that's the most important thing. I talk to her and then Jupiter Games is a place where people go and play Dungeons and Dragons and a card shop, play Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon and all that. I'm like, oh man, this is fun. So I, I, I went back into my childhood and I took elements and I combined two different dragons from two childhood cartoons and games that they used to play. And I created this little guy right here. That was pretty fun, I was just doing me. It was just completely me. There was no animal and I didn't have to, Worry about that, you know. I got to create these dice there, and again, worry about depth and working about light, how light works, and all that. It was a nice time, also. And the mural was only supposed to be up to here, but I'm like, you know what? I want to extend it because it's and let's, let's, let's beautify it a little bit. You know what I mean, like, let's add more to it, you know. So that was very nice. And this was in Binghamton, New York. And again, I take advantage and I go, I travel and all that, you know. And I get to, and I went, and I went to Scranton, Pennsylvania, where the office was filmed. So if you guys are office fans, I was like, I'm. I'm went there and took advantage of the day. People were like, oh, why don't you go to Ithaca where they have beautiful waterfalls? I'm like, yeah, but the show wasn't filmed in Ithaca. I'm gonna go to Scranton, <laughs> you know? So I went there for the day, I did this whole tour. I went to a coal mine tour. Never thought in my life I'd do a coal mine tour. And I learned a lot about their industry. That's crazy. I was like, wow, this is brutal work. Wow. You know, so this is the latest mural I did. So this mural I did for I did for Avon, New York. It was, it's over there right by Buffalo, close to Niagara Falls. And again, I took advantage, I went to Niagara Falls for the first time ever, I went to Canada for the first time ever. Took my passport, drove in there, spent the day there, went on the, went on the boat, I saw it, I'm like, man, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, you know? And again, going to back to placement, so Avon, the way these this call to artists work, and sometimes if you see a, a, an expired call to artist, reach out. If you think that this is a great project and you wanna be a part of it, reach out. Like, so this one was expired by like about three or four days. 
And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I, I just missed it. You know what? Let me just reach out. Let me see. Let me see. You never know. I reach out. Hey, can I submit a project? They're like, oh, we love your work. Yeah, sure, submit. I submitted, and ultimately, I got the, I got, I got the, I got the job. You know, very fast. I had, to, I had like two, three days to submit. And this was an RFP, so it was a request for proposal. So, you know, like I, I submitted for three different cities, and I just basically started working nonstop there. This needs to get done. I need to submit to this. You know, we did this and that, and very complex pieces. So all these horses running down. You create a nice contrast for putting the dark color on one side with a lighter horse, and you put the lighter color all the way in the back with the darker horse, and it creates a nice flow. And you know, put the you think about you think about complementary colors with the orange. And the town is known as a horse racing town, it's horse shows and breeding. So that's and they loved it. And also, I took I thought about the placement because it's running down. So if you look at it, the horses look like they're running down the hill. The hill. And the, and again. The, what I love paying in small town America is how people are so welcoming to you. They did a whole, every single mural, so like the mural festival was still going on, and so what they did was, it's nine murals, nine villages, and one county throughout the whole month of July, right? So I did, uh, so I, I was like one of the first, I was in the first set. So this was about two weeks ago? Yeah, about two weeks ago, they just finished one now, and they're starting a new, a new one that needs to be revealed this Saturday. So it was great. They did a, a whole celebration. I remember I got there and like so they wrote in big letters on the ground like, "Oh, we love you, Ivan." Nobody's ever done that for me. Nobody ever, like I was like, "Oh man, this is heartwarming," you know. And and we were, and they had put loving mints and had these little events. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful time. And I I even told them like, "Hey guys, like I, like I was staying on a farm there, like a beautiful farm there at nighttime." I remember getting there and there was like all these fireflies just twinkling. It looked like a fairy forest. I never seen it in my life. It looked like Christmas in July. Literally. Yeah, because it was all of the natural, it was beautiful. You know, and again, the people that you meet along the way, that's I think the, the, the biggest treasure of all, the people you meet along the way. You know, and the friends that will be over a lifetime. You know, and people were, were great. I mean, you have like, these little like, little, little old people come up to me and think, well, thank you so much, sir. This was amazing, you know? But, so this was good. And then, so aside from murals, you know, I also do a lot of collaboration. I've also done a lot of collaborations. You know, I've done a lot of live art, because public art extends to live art as well. And the beautiful thing about Miami is my art has become so ingrained within our culture that people want to be able to incorporate in every single event. So, you know, as you guys know, Formula One, this was the first year Formula One comes to Miami. You know, we got reached out by them. We did the we did a we did the beautiful we did the beautiful project. I did a mural for them as well. And I did this car. They live painted this car, you know? And I do and I, and so it was there and I you know I'm, like I said I'm from Carroll City so basically I had to throw it up right there real quick you know Miami 2022 Carroll City with the car and all of that you know tell the people know that that it's not Miami Garden it's Carroll City you know? yeah it's, it's the, <laughs> you know so we do that there it was a great experience first time getting into Formula One and now I'm in the, and now I actually watch the races now I'm actually a fan of it you know just to show you and then I remember so now I do I also design Guayabas and I've done clothing as well. And uh, I remember when I was there showcasing at the, at the at the History of Miami Museum. It's the one that's in downtown. I mean, history or history of Miami. One of the, yeah, so that one. And you know, this guy comes up to me. He's like, bro, I love your work, man. Like, you know, like I have a Guayabera company. Let's collaborate. I'm like, oh man, let's do it. And so I've done designs for Guayaberas, and you know, me and him have a great relationship. Uh, I have a new design coming out soon with him, and that's gonna be great. And it goes to show you, like, I'm, I'm like contributing to the evolution of my people's clothing. You know, like the like Guayabas and all that, and like adding my own little flair to it. So it goes, you know, it's a very, it's a very honorable thing to do. And then I also designed here for Winwood Brewing. Uh, you know, they hit me up, and I go, we'd love to do that, done a can with you. You know, and aside from the can, I really want it to be Miami, as Miami as possible. Because I want, I, I told them, I was like, listen, I want this to be Ray's Pizza at two, at two in the morning, <laughs> and the next day you're gonna be super hungover. And they're like, love it. So inside the beer, I was like, I want, can we do my main? Yeah, we can do my main. Can we do guava? Yeah. I bought some, uh, I bought some, some mango, and they're like, let's do it. And they, and they created this milkshake IPA in this style that, that I'm not sure if they had done it in the past or it was something new, and they loved it. And I love the collaboration. It was such a great time. You know, it, it was a very huge success. And I mean, and it looks delicious, you know, aside from the flamingo. And I want to do the gold chain, because that flashy gold chain with the milkshake right there, you know, because that's as, as Cuban, as, as, as Miami as it gets. You get me with the Cuban gold chain. Like, I mean, growing up, I remember my dad, I remember my dad had this massive, like, ridiculous gold chain there. And, like, all my, my cousins and my, my uncles, and I'd be like, wow, that's, I want a gold chain, too. I remember I went, I went as far as buying fake gold chains as I got, uh, like, in my teens. Don't forget the Pennsylvania. Yeah, and I did. Oh, yeah, we had it all. 
you know, it was fake, but it was, well, I was. <laughs> And so I did, I also, you know, Edible South Florida, I designed the cover for them. This one actually went on to go winning the award for like one of the covers for the year. And uh, not just for Edible Magazine, but it was Edible Magazine and they had three covers representing the category. Um, and then, you know, there's other magazines there and we won it. You know, thankfully for this one right here, what turns out to be avocados turned out to be something very important. You know, I'm like, oh, I would like to be in fish or something like that, but hey, avocados, right? You know, so, so this was a great opportunity. And again, I was out there showing, showcasing my artwork. This was at the Coral Gables uh, at Carnival of the Mile, you know? And, you know, I met the lady there and she loved my work and the collaborate that the collaboration happened. And then my latest work, which, <coughs> which I did for McDonald's, it was this program called Rimi Golod, and so I designed this thing as you see, no, I did not work for McDonald's, <laughs> you know, I designed this there, you know, as, this is a uniform that I designed for them, but it, it fits so well, and it works so well, that it looks something like on street clothes, you know what I mean, I designed also the, the hat as well, that I miss my mama, because the whole idea behind it was basically, how do we create Latinidad, uh, unity between Latin, Latin people, because the whole project is to basically uplift Latin communities, and it was Miami, Dallas, um, Miami, Dallas, Phoenix, and LA. You know, to be doing it, I was able to, fortunately, was able to represent Miami, and I met uh, this reggaeton rapper named Nye, and I got to collaborate with these people, and, and you know, and, and I wanted to create different birds that represented different nations, you know? Especially especially out here, like, you know, we have a lot of other Latin nations that usually aren't represented in the United States or, or in popular media. Like, you know, I had, um, I had here the Quetzal, which basically is from Guatemala. I had, you can't, you can't see it, but I had a macaw, which is Honduras. I had um, a tagororo, which is Cuban, because you know, Cuban, so I have got the Cuban bird. And I put the Cuban flowers, well, and my bolsa. I put the Dominican flower for, for the Dominican Republic. I put the hibiscus for the Puerto Ricans. I put, um, I put um, the, the, the plumeria for, for Nicaragua. And then for, I put the orchid to represent Colombia, Venezuela, and Brazil. So I wanted to represent all these nations, and of course I wanted to represent more nations, but I mean like this is all done in Illustrator. And it goes to show you as an artist, you need to have a massive tool set. So this was all done in Illustrator. You know I mean? But again, I keep the style, I keep the branding, because people were calling me and saying like, Ivan, is your work made? Did you collaborate with McDonald's? Because I didn't see anything post about it, and I think they stole your work. And I'm like, no, they, I'm like, no, 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 they didn't. I actually have, I can't post about it, you know, contracts and all that. So it was a great collaboration, it was, a great message you know I was glad to be able to work with them on, on this project and uh, you know you add the gold I think once you add the golden arches to your to your resume and it kind of says something you get me to going from this kid that basically was painting on the streets and abandoned buildings to be able to working out with McDonald's and or Formula One and going and traveling for, for with, with and painting in cities across the world I mean I think that says something and I think that says about longevity and what you can do with branding because the vines are not only vines, the vines they represent the, the energy that connects us all. The time and space that we share, that's what connects us all. All my work, are connected. we're all connected by these vines. And the thorns are the most important part of the vines because the thorns represent the obstacles. The thorns represent the things that make you. All your all your tribulations, your trials and tribulations are those thorns, you know? And because of that, that and they add beauty as well to it. You get me? Because what is life without, without pain? You, know, you need to have a little bit of pain, you need to have a little bit of hardship to be able to appreciate Everything that comes your way, all the good that comes in your life. And so that's what those thorns represent in my vines, you know? And of course, like, this right here was the Lamis Manas, where you have the golden wing. The golden, river, the golden wing is all the Latin culture coming together as a Latino community, you know? <clears throat> and then I leave you guys with this, right? So this is a quote from my favorite philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche. And it goes, the great end of art is to strike the imagination with the power of a soul that refuses to admit defeat even in the midst of collapsing worlds. So, just like how those violinists kept playing as the Titanic sank, us artists will keep creating and keep beautifying our world to be able to bring joy, no matter how dark it gets. So, my friends, keep on being artists and keep on pushing forward our aesthetics and our culture for wherever you guys go at. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
life just took me there. You know, life go like uh, like projects. You know, I just went over there because of projects. You know, and like I figured, like you know, the more you, the more stuff you kind of do in a state, the more people become familiar with your work, and you kind of want to bring them out there more. You know, so you kind of just start doing more and more, and little by little, you just start attracting that energy. You know, but uh, but I mean, none, nonetheless, like I do want to go, like I, like I want to go to Memphis. It's uh, the next place in Tennessee I went. Like I went to Nashville, and it's beautiful out here. So I definitely want to go check out Memphis next. Google is your strongest friend. So what you do is you go on Google, you put call to artist, and then there's a tool that says dates. Because sometimes you put call to artist and things from three years ago come out. You put call to artist, and you put this, uh, when was, how old is it? You put it, oh, it, oh, I want it to be like a month old, a week old, a day old, years old. So you want to do like a month and under, you know? And the thing is, guys, you need to just keep on, you know, just keep on working. Like again, paint, paint as much as you can, submit to things because, because like you never know, you never know uh, when somebody will give you an opportunity. Because I've been to projects where they'll have a range of artists that have never painted a mural, come mixed with artists that are are veterans, you know. And so when you have that mix, and you gotta give, you give opportunity. And somebody you never know, they might want to give you that opportunity. You get me? So if you show your artwork and this and that, you know, they also have programs there where you can apprentice um, as a mural volunteer, and they'll fly you out there, and you can work under an artist, and you know, you learn by them, you know. Or like I said, you also can. Learn being an artist assistant as well. Learning, it's a great way to learn the business of the side of art. You get me? Because you have to, that's something that's very important in art. In art, you have to be, you can't be just an artist. You have to be half an artist and half a business person. You need to be able to do both. You need to be able to thrive. So yes, you can be extremely talented, and sometimes people do get lucky and they have people to, to hold their hand along the way and guide them all the way, but most of the time it's not like that. Most of the time you gotta put, you gotta put, you gotta put in the work and you gotta find that opportunity. So yes, Google is your best friend. Cost and then sometimes people will send it your way. You're getting your network, you'll be like, oh guys, look apply to this. You know? And another thing is, don't really tell too many people when you're applying. I mean, like, like mm -hmm. because what happens is at the end of the day, they're your peers, they're your friends, but they're still your competition. So you have to remember that. You know? Any other questions? I have a question. Um, what is the difference between you? We were at the RC building uh -huh. a couple weeks ago. I saw we saw your mural there, and then I also saw your Cuban flag. Can you talk about both of those? Okay. Was, it, was it the bread basket and the RC Oh, that was uh. So that right there, we did a mural for the farm. It was uh the farmers of Latin America. It was something during the pandemic. It was like one of the first murals we did in the, during the pandemic, and it was a collaboration between me and my and my friend uh, Louis Bayek. You know, another great artist, by the way. Um, you know, we did the collaboration there, and uh, you know, they did live stream this whole event. Tito Puente Jr. came out and was performing while we were there painting, and it was a, it was a great time. You know, and so that was that was that during the pandemic. That was commissioned. That was commissioned. Yes, that was commissioned. And then um, the Cuban flag that was not commissioned. The, the Cuban flag was during the protest that happened last year in 2021. Now during this time, I mean, there was, there was this wave of emotion. Remember, um, a lot of the MSG artists, the, from the MSG crew, they called me and was like, "Hey, Ivan, you want to come paint with us with this massive Cuban flag?" You know, like, let's do it. You know, and then we did this man this video, and then we did like. Then we did this, uh, you know, we did a, uh, yeah, we did like this massive painting. We did that like in three days. We painted that massive flag. There, like 18 artists just there grinding it out. And, you know, I'd be there painting. I was crying during it. You know, a lot of like, because the thing is, a lot of us Cubans and even Cuban Americans, I've been to Cuba once before, but my grandpa, my grandfather was a Cuban was a, was a political prisoner, so I know all the stories and the horrors of the regime and all that. You get me? So. So I really, you know, we, we had to strike hard. We had to strike it hard. I remember you did a video there where it was super questionable. The things I was saying, my, it was, yeah. it was very a lot of passion, but, but I can definitely tell you, I'm probably blacklisted from Cuba after that. After that <laughs> I went viral. I went viral amongst the Cuban community, so I can guarantee you, somebody out there saw that. Yeah. So that was, so that was the Cuban flag, you know. And, uh, I remember seeing it. I remember seeing it, and, when, and I, you know, I really, I really thought that there was going to be a change. When that happened, and then, uh, you know, time passed by, and the Cuban flag got destroyed, and. I remember, I remember somebody wanted to restore it. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, for what? You know what I'm saying we we lost, man. Until until things until until real until it can only happen over there. You know, we, there's only so much we can do here. You know I mean, so let let this be a reminder to the people. You know I mean, of, uh, of our, our still our still our ongoing struggle. No matter what our spirits here, you, you see you see the, the the power of our people here. You know, and we still keep on pushing forward. 
During that time there, we did some projects there where we went paint some grass and the keys that were washing up. So if you go down to the keys, you know, there's certain, there's certain places there, like a mar and grassy key, where we have a bunch of Cuban rafts that we've painted and all that. One of them is still on the water that I painted. You know, with the stuff that was there from people came. So that was that, was that story. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any more Thank questions? You. Yeah, I was the most expensive contract? Yeah. No, the one that I said, the $30,000, you know? And then we, like, Fortunately, I've been able to, you know, as time passes by, you know, and the more work you get, you know, you can start raising your prices and raising, it's like anything, you know, supply and demand, you know, and then you start getting to a point where like, you know, you can start saying no, you know, and then if somebody, like, like I remember somebody hits me up and they're like, oh, you know, why don't you do a logo? I'm like, okay, it's gonna cost this amount, you know, because I don't want to do it. You know? right. And they're like, oh yeah, sure, all right. I'm like, okay, you know what I'm saying, that worked. You know, you go, you do it real quick there, you know, so sometimes little odd, little odd things like that will come up that if they're willing to pay a price, you do it. But if you get to the point where you're not able, that you, that you don't need to take it on, then that's a beautiful thing. And you know, for, I'm fortunate, fortunately enough, I haven't had to, I haven't had to have a real job since 2017. I haven't had to have a real job. So I've been a full-time artist ever since, and thankfully things are finally thriving. After after the like things were steadily climbing, the pandemic hit, and I basically kind of I kind of got a like, I got floored a little bit. It was a really bad year. Like I, I remember I drove to New Orleans to do a job for fifteen hundred dollars, you know, to, to do a mural there because I just needed I needed money, you know. Like, and so <clears throat> you know, it goes to show you those times there, and you could you could easily quit during those times. It's that pushing forward, and once twenty twenty one hit, things really started taking off. You know? When you spent your design, is it on the iPad? iPad, okay. iPad Procreate, best tool you can get. You I got it. Oh. So you have two business, and you can also resell it online, right? No, what? I'm sorry. What so it's, you can use it also later online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can do it Illustrator, you can do videos on it. It's great. It's a, I'm saying it's a very powerful tool. It's $10, $14. You know, you pay for it once, not like Photoshop, but they, want it. they charge you $50 a month. Fair, but I mean, hey, can't live without Adobe, right? Um, so, so yeah, guys. So I mean, that's I mean, that's basically, uh, you know, it's you can definitely do that. Like I said, like definitely learning Illustrator, learning a bunch of tools, you know, helps out. Learning videos and all these things as well, you know, because I was able to like, you know, uh, do my own stuff and a lot of the photographs I'll take and I'll edit my own things and all that. You know, I mean, you just like the more you know, the better it is for your career. You know. Have you done any NFTs? Yeah, I did it. Yes, I know. I've done an NFT projects. So, um, the thing is, I started it the wrong way, so I kind of like I kind of I kind of shot myself in the foot from the beginning because the way it is is you got to kind of it's like you're not really doing the pieces. You're kind of just doing the elements for it, and then you're basically and you basically put in an algorithm, and then it creates the ten thousand pieces. Like I'm still working on the project little by little. You know what I mean, I'm doing hand drawn flamingo kings, and the whole usage behind it is. Flamingo Kings were basically supposed to be a project that would fund uh, scholarships for students, for high school students to be able to go to art school. So, you know, and that was that was my ultimate goal with Flamingo Kings. It's on hold for now because the murals just the murals are what mainly keeps me busy. So my main focus is still on that. But um, something with murals that I learned is that your murals will only go as far as your body lets you. You know, so I have to. So aside from the murals, we have to keep on expanding on other. On other branches of my artwork, you know, so that's a nice. So yeah, that's basically uh, that's as far as the NFTs. That's where that goes. But I still plan on going forward with it. I still believe it's a very integral part of our future. I think it's definitely something that people should learn about. And, and, uh, and I'm curious. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. And also gives an avenue for digital artists to be able to really thrive. You know, something that they didn't really have aside from the actual uh, graphic design or conceptual art space. Anybody else have any questions? You can be here all night. You can ask me anything you want. Thank you so much. Thank it was so such much. a great talk. I really. appreciate that. Thank you. And I love your persistence. Like, don't, like, how many times you have to, like, get back up and just keep going. Okay, and keep on going. Like, I, like, just one last note. So, I was basically homeless at one point in 2015. You know, I was living in a studio in Opalaka there, like, uh, like this office building. 
you know, like in a tiny little space. It was probably the size of from here, like you cut that into like a little corn, probably from, yeah, from there to there, to here, to here, to here, and I lived in it. And I did these crazy ventures all the way to Dania Beach. It was a terrible time, but I never quit. I kept on going, you know, and this was before the vines. I was still painting very dark. That's another thing you're like, damn, man, I gotta figure something out. <laughs> can't be doing, I can't, I can't be living like this, you know? And um, again, it's that resilience. You keep on going, and it's the, those moments there that elevate you to the next thing. It's a part of my story, and I'm very appreciative of those days. You know? And you said for people were critiquing you, which was like. Yeah, I had a lot of professors and I had a lot of artists on the streets. I had people just all the time, basically, you know, like, it's like, you know, they question you, they try you, they like, ah, and you're like, mm, you know, but you, but you learn from it, you get better from it. That's why I love the, like, I love, like, a lot of the, the professors from. FIU, like uh, like William Burke, he's like he's very old school Miami. He'll tell you, he'll tell you how it is. He doesn't like it, will like, you know? or if you know Louis Ullman also like all these guys from like the, the teaching since the seventies. I mean, they, they 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 won't they they, they won't they won't want to sugarcoat anything. You know? So that type of that type of teaching to me is very effective. I mean, because they don't coddle you because they know that the real world the real world has has no time for your BS. Thank yeah. you again. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. I really do appreciate you. it. You know? Good luck, guys. Good luck.